Hey, I'm Hello Rodney. Thanks for clicking on my video. Well, I want to do a video on this uh, thing about uh, this meeting that went on in uh, in Vietnam. And uh, so I was all excited and happy about the whole deal because I was thinking, well, they've got these teams of negotiators. So there's no way that these teams of negotiators can't do the job. So I was thinking that this meeting in Vietnam was going to be nothing but a uh, a celebration that they had come up with a big, big deal and that the whole thing was going to, was going to, uh, to go down. And then I think what happened, because there's no way that the President of the United States is going to go over there unless the deal's already been made. He's got the Secretary of State and the negotiating team doing the negotiations. Now, there was an interesting thing that happened in the, in the, first, in the first meeting when they got together, when they were talking, and Trump had said something like, you know, if, if Chairman Kim wants, to, you know, if he would like to talk about what we discussed in private. So in private, Kim Jong-il is all going along with the program that the thing that the negotiating team had teams had come up with was what was going to happen. So that's why they had the meeting. They didn't have the meeting because they're going to go there and iron out the details. They ironed out the details first. And then when, when Trump said that, you know, uh, Chairman Kim, if you'd like to talk about what we discussed in private, you know, that would be fine. And, but he didn't say anything that I knew something's happening. Something's happening there. So then, because of the time difference and everything, I'm, I'm there waiting and waiting to find out what's going to happen. And then I read the headline that the uh, president will be having a press conference. And on a deal like this, you don't have an individual press conference. You have the two leaders that just got through. You have the signing ceremony. You have the two, the two leaders there patting each other on the back, saying what good boys we are to have done what we did. And I was hoping that maybe, maybe the headline was off, but whenever they showed the, the, uh, whenever they showed the, the stage with only one podium, I knew that was it. Now, I think what happened was that uh, Kim Jong-un miscalculated Trump and thought that they would come up with some sort of something to get Trump there, and then Kim Jong-un would, would uh, tweak the deal a little bit in order to get the deal signed, and that Trump just didn't go along with it, that he miscalculated which is a kind of a chicken shit thing to do if that's what happened because the negotiating teams would have already ironed out the details. That meeting right there, to me, was supposed to have been a celebration. They ironed out all the details. They've been doing this thing for months. They got it all together, and then at the last minute, Kim wanted something extra, and Trump wasn't willing to give it to him. Now, Trump is not just negotiating for the United States. He's negotiating for the United States, South Korea, Japan, even China on a deal like this. So, Trump just said, forget it. Now, if you remember the first time that they got together, Trump presented them with a, with a video showing how life would be if they would go along with the program 
you know, like a, oh, it's going to be a glorious day. You have all kinds of stuff, you know. But if you don't, this is what you're going to get. A dystopia. You're going to get something bad's going to happen. And Kim Jong-un thought that, well, maybe he could embarrass the president into signing something that wasn't a good deal. And Trump just called him on his bluff, and so they have to start, start, go back to the drawing board. Which means that Trump is not going to be too happy with this. I'm sure they had a deal. Because you don't go and make a big hullabaloo like this unless the deal's in the bag. So, Kim Jong-un is on the train right now going back to Korea, North Korea. So, there's a lot of pressure on this guy now. A lot of pressure on him. The United States is not taking off the, uh, the, uh, the sanctions. Everybody's still on board with that. So I think that what's going to happen is that uh, Chairman Kim is going to realize that, that he's, he's not going to out, out negotiate Trump. He's going to have to actually <coughs> go with whatever the, the teams come up with. That he can't just go in there the last minute and try and tweak the deal. So if it happens again, I think Trump might pull the trigger on this guy. Because, you know, you, you, he want, they, they want to get this thing done. And I think Trump is, is uh, he's the president of the United States. He's coming up for re-election in, uh, it's going to be, it's interesting, about a year and a half, it's going to be another election. So I think Trump wants to get the deal done, and, and he might even be afraid that if he doesn't get the deal done, if he, got, if he didn't win re-election, then the, deal, the whole deal would fall apart because of, if, if he loses the election, you know, the losers, the Democratic Party are the party of losers. It's a pathetic situation now with these Democrats, I swear. And I'm a Democrat. But when the Democrats come out and say, they say that it's okay to kill a baby that's coming out of the womb after nine months, if it's still in the mother's body, that is not good, and the Democratic Party, Democrat Party, is going to pay for that. I mean, there's, I've, I've, I've been with these people for years and years and years. Solid Democrat. The best Democrat there ever was. Straight party ticket voting Repub uh, Democrat. For the whole time. All the way from when I first started voting, all the way through Bill Clinton's term. First term. Loyal Democrat. And I kept kept uh, thinking, maybe these people are going to turn around. Maybe they're going to turn around. Maybe they're going to turn around. Maybe they're going to turn around. And then they go and do something like infanticide. It's okay to kill a baby after the baby's born. Are you kidding me? So, I think Trump is basically going to pull the trigger on this guy, Kim Jong-un. If he doesn't sign, this is, I mean, this is just my opinion. If he doesn't sign the deal before Trump gets elected, I think there's going to be big problems. And I, I think that Trump, if, I think if they, if they go back into the negotiations and they want to start from where they, where they ended off with this, I think it's going to be a problem. Because I'm pretty sure they would not have met had the teams not agreed to what was going on. And then Kim Jong-un at the very last minute decides to change the deal. Trump is not going to be happy with that. He put on a happy face, uh, a reasonable face, but he, he's he's a negotiator. He knew he had to walk away. And what is he going to what What is Kim Jong Un? What's he going to go back to? He's going to get on a train and take him three days to get back to North Korea, to a country that is totally isolated. I mean, he's going he's gonna to have to come to the realization at some point that if he doesn't make a deal, he's going to get whacked. They're going to knock him off. Either his own people, his own generals are going to say, look, man, you know, we can't take it anymore. They're going to get rid of him 
or else he's going to make a deal and he'll be a hero for the North Korean people. I'm Hella Rodney. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.